Hi, welcome to the challah bake. Tonight we're going to show you how easy it is and how much fun it is to make challah. So Esty, let's get started. So we've got our aprons, we've got all of our ingredients, we've got our bowl, and most important, we've got this beautiful challah card that doesn't only tell you what the recipe is, but it actually tells you the thoughts and feelings you should have as you're putting in each ingredient. Your bowl represents your family. Okay, should we start with the flour? Yep. We're gonna measure out three cups of flour. We're gonna try to get it as even as possible so that our measurements are as exact as we can make them. There's a lot more depth to just making challah than just putting things together. There really is a prayer and thoughtful component to it. And if you take a look, flour represents your livelihood and your sustenance. And as you're putting it in, you've got this opportunity to speak to God, to connect to yourself, and to think about that and ask Him, please God, help me with my parnasa or my sustenance or my livelihood as we call it. Wow. Okay, I think next we're gonna put in the sugar. We have here pre-measured one third cup of sugar and we're just going to put it in and give it a little mix. What does Whoops. sugar represent to us? Sweetness, that's what we're looking at. We're all here looking for a sweet and wonderful year. We're looking for a life that's matov umanayim. That's what we think about when we put the sugar in. Okay, ready for the yeast? We're going to put in one tablespoon of instant dry yeast. It really works well, and it's super simple because no proofing is required. And when we put yeast in, what do we think about? All the rising that has to happen, all the growth. And that's what life is all about. That's what we're looking for, growing and expanding, becoming the best that we can be. Okay, now we're gonna put in the salt. We have one teaspoon of salt. Everybody measure out one teaspoon, that's it. But it's gonna do its job to, do, uh, to make wonderful challah. And I'm gonna mix all those dry ingredients together. What's salt? Salt's got a little sting. Salt represents criticism. And when we're gonna criticize someone, we gotta think twice. And so we take our salt and we hide it among all the other ingredients, try to keep it next to the sugar. Okay, now we're ready for the oil. We have here one third cup of oil and we're just gonna simply pour it in. Oil represents blessing and abundance. And when you're pouring in that oil, you need to be thinking about yourself and all your family members. Think about their names. Think about the blessings that you'd like to see happen to each and every one of them. Okay, now we're gonna pour in the egg. I've pre-checked this egg to make sure there is no blood spots in this egg at all. And we're going to pour it in and... What do eggs represent? Eggs represent fertility. Eggs have a certain shape. They're an oval. It's the cycle of life. Sometimes we're up and sometimes we're down. What are we looking for? God's guidance in all of those times. Esty, this is looking great. Okay, so we're now ready for our warm water. We're gonna pour it in and then we're ready to get our hands dirty. Water is like one of our greatest symbols. If we really stop to think about it, most of, like most of the world and our bodies are 80% water. So what do we say water represents? Mayim chayim. What's the water of life? Torah itself. And I always feel badly because I think people make mistakes when we think about the definition of Torah. Torah is the instructions to living. And so when we put in that water, that's what we're really asking God. Give us guidance. Give us that understanding to life. And where are we going to find it? From our blessed Torah. It's really something. That's amazing. Yeah. So now I see like Esty's getting very busy kneading. And what are we doing when we're kneading? We're putting all the different personalities and all the different ingredients that our families are made of. And we're putting it together into one beautiful, united, soft, warm, delicious hollow. That's what it's about. And the dough is just coming together. And I'm trying to get all those pieces from the side into one ball so that we can really work this dough to get the gluten rising and working hard to get fluffy and really delicious challah. This is my favorite part. This is my getting all my frustrations out. Do you want to help? It's almost like an exercise. <laughs> you want to help? Let's see your biceps. Go, girl. Okay. Okay, okay I'm going to take it out of the bowl and really work this dough to create 
a soft, elastic dough that will be super simple to work with. Esty, how do you know when you've finished like kneading, when you've done enough? My arms are hurting. <laughs> <laughs> um, but really, I, you can feel it in the dough. You can feel the elastic and the resistance in the dough. And once you've finished, you want that the dough, as you can see, it's all sticking to me, but you want the dough to have a bit of stickiness, something that will bounce back at you. That's what I always do. I always like stick my finger and like give it a poke, and if it bounces back, then I know I'm pretty much done. So here we have challah that's risen for about an hour, and I want to show you how beautiful, high, and fluffy it has become. Challah is really a mitzvah. Now, what's a mitzvah? A mitzvah is not just a commandment. The root word in Hebrew for mitzvah is the word for connection. Because whenever we do a mitzvah, it connects us. So, Esti, what do you think it connects us to? This connects us to Shabbos, mm -hmm. to Hashem. Yes. And really into your inner self, right? Because we've got this little piece of Hashem in all of us. Now, Esti, I really, I can't get over this. Look at that. That looks amazing, but mine's not so tight. Is it still gonna work? I think it's gonna work really well. I think that they're gonna rise and they're gonna just attach to each other naturally. Okay, so that's so great. So you don't have to really fill it like squishy squish. Nope, we're good. Okay. Great. Okay, another trick that I have is I egg the challah right after it's been shaped because I don't wanna wait around for an hour. So I'm just gonna take an egg that's been cracked, I added a little bit of water, and I mixed it up, and I just give the chal a light brush before I bake it, and I put it into a preheated oven at 375 for about half hour. That's all it needs. Es, do you wanna hear my secret? After I've done that, I get sugar, and I really try my best to get vanilla sugar and, vanilla sugar and sprinkle it right on top. You like sweet challah. I do. Not only that, the smell is terrific. You can oh. for sure sell your house after you've done that. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> but SD, this is a really fun night. I want to do something really crazy with our challah that I've heard people do, and that is that they put chocolate chips. And look at this. This looks like a bag of the best stuff ever. What are these called? Oh, black bag chocolate chips. They look great. So how would you stick your chocolate chips in now? So basically, I would have done it before I egged it, had you asked me earlier. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> but now, so when you are at home, or here to, no, so when you are rolling out those balls, just sprinkle in some chocolate chips. But you know what? We forgot. So we're going to just sprinkle some on oh and my stick gosh. some in. And look at that. It's going to be a beautiful chocolate chip flower challah. Here we have two beautiful challahs all shaped. We're going to let them rise for an hour and put them into a preheated oven at 375 for a half hour. That's all they need and your house is going to smell ready for Shabbos. So amazing Esty because I've always been baking them at 350 for an hour so I guess 375 cuts down that time and they just look so special. I can hardly wait to eat this on Shabbos. That looks great. But I don't think this should be the end of the story, right? Because we have this thing called the Challah Baking Club. I'm in charge of the people up north, and Esty's in charge of the people down south. So what's the Challah Baking Club all about? Challah Baking Club is just a great way for to get together and do something meaningful with friends and family and make challah. Learn tips and tricks about how to make fantastic challah that your family will love. So it's all on this card. So what do we have to say? Happy challah baking. Have a great time. <laughs> Good night. <laughs>